Uh, next, next up, we have House File 2966 from Representative Cosman. And I move that House File 2966 be re-referred to the Transportation and Finance and Policy Committee. Uh, welcome, Representative Kosnick. And uh, I understand you have a DE1 author's amendment for your bill. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chair. I, I apologize that I'm a little uh, disheveled here. I'm, I'm in another committee on my phone, so I'm trying to pay attention here. Uh, there is a DE in amendment that I would um, request to be moved, and then an amendment to the DE just to clarify some language that I would also request uh, to be uh, moved as well, Mr. Chair. All right, I move the adoption of the DE1 amend author's amendment. Um, Representative Kosnick, please explain your amendment. The DE, amend the DE amendment, um, well, first I, I was working with, uh, we had a similar bill introduced in the Senate, not exactly, um, but they uh, took up uh, the companion of this bill and wanted to add um, retired National Guard uh, members into the bill, which I didn't object to. So we're trying to streamline it. Uh, as sometimes happens across the hallway, uh, they get it a little, little bit uh, complicated. And um, so we're in, reintroducing the DE amendment to clarify uh, adding uh, National Guard uh, people it, into the uh, veterans designation license. And then I'll uh, just uh, briefly, uh, the DE, or excuse me, the, the A3 amendment uh, to the DE1 um, clarifies um, an their wording from the Senate. So it deletes a little bit and, and clarifies the amendment further. All right, uh, thank you for that. Um, all those in favor of the amendment to, oh, or, or see, I see yep. that um, you also have an amendment to the DE1 author's amendment for House File 2966. And I move the adoption of the amendment to the amendment uh, Representative Kosnick, please explain your amendment to the amendment. Uh, I did in my previous comments, but it, it deletes a line that was redundant in the uh, in, in the good faith effort of our friends across the, the hallway. So I had to help them with their amendment, let's say. All right, thank you. And all those in favor of the amendment to the amendment, please say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion passes and we're back to the discussion on the DE1 author's amendment as amended. All right, um, any further discussion? Would you like think, me to discuss the bill or we're still on the amendments, Mr. Chair? We're still on the amendments. Yep, on, okay. on the Sorry amendments, yeah. And then seeing none, all those in favor of the DE1 author's amendment as amended to put House File 2966 in the shape the author prefers, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right, the motion passes. Uh, Representative Kosnick, any further comments before hearing from your testifier? Well, just briefly, uh, Mr. Chair, I would appreciate the opportunity to introduce the bill a little bit, and uh, we do have a testifier. And, you know, under current law, former service members must have served at least 181 consecutive days on active duty orders to obtain a veteran's designation on the state issued license or identification card. So what this bill does is it modifies the eligibility and documents required for a well-earned designation and distinction of veterans on the license or ID. It allows, uh, also allows the National Guard and Armed Force Reserves to obtain the designation if they have met the reserve retirement, which includes 20 years, of qualifying service, but it still does require an honorable discharge and a general or a general discharge under honorable conditions. And so I'm proud to also share with the committee that this request came to me uh, not by a paid lobbyist or organization, but uh, the way a lot of laws uh, should should work as a newer Lakeville constituent came to me, gave me a call this summer, and we'll hear from her shortly. And so I'm uh, proud to introduce this bill on their behalf because I support the idea uh, and my constituent, of course. And Major Vicki Schwartz uh, served in our country for over 26 years in the US Army Reserves. 
uh, but she does not have a discharge that meets the current requirements of 181 consecutive service uh, on active duty. She has 119 days, but like I said, she has served our country for over 26 years. Uh, for Major Schwartz and several Minnesota veterans like her, there is no doubt that they've served our country honorably. And we should be privileged to provide the small rec recognition by adding the veterans designation on their license or ID or even auto plates if they do request that. So I appreciate the committee's consideration, your time, Mr. Chair, for this bill to honor more of our National Guard and Reserves with the veterans designation license. And again, Mr. Chair, Major Vicky, Vicky Schwartz is available for short testimony on why this is important and also to help answer any questions of the committee. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, Representative Kosnick. Uh, welcome, uh, Major Vicki Schwartz. Uh, welcome to the La uh, Labor and Veterans Committee. Uh, you may please state your name and you may proceed. Excellent. My name is Vicki Schwartz and as Representative Kosnick said, I'm a retired major from the United States Army Reserves. I served 26 and a half consecutive years from June 1974 to January 2001, exclusively in the Army Reserves. In June of 2021, when I relocated to Lakeville and needed to update my driver's license, I decided it was time to get the veteran's designation on my license ID card, as many of my friends had. I was disappointed to discover that the state of Minnesota had so narrowly defined a veteran as someone who had served 181 consecutive days and was documented on their DD-214. It did not matter that I had a United States Department of Defense military ID that really grants me access to most active duty posts throughout the United States. I had a VA veterans ID card. I had the Department of the Army retirement orders. I had a DD 214 with 119 consecutive days. I had an ARPC form 249-2-E, which is a chronological statement of retirement points and a letter from the Dakota County VA office stating I was entitled to veteran status per federal rules. In addition, I receive a monthly retirement stipend. I have tried care for life, medical coverage. I will be able to be buried at Fort Selling National Cemetery. I have post-exchange or PX privileges, and I have morale, welfare, and recreation privileges that allows me access to military resorts across the world. After serving all these years to include being a company commander and a team leader, for a training battalion, I found myself unable to get the designation on my card. After a considerable amount of phone calls to the state and with help from Representative Kosnick, I was able to get the female veteran license plate using these documents. Yet the licensing agency did not have the flexibility to issue me a driver's license card with the veteran's designation. I am guessing that many of you are probably wondering 
Why would I go through this much work and this much effort, perhaps for something that seems insignificant? From my perspective, I'm a proud American, a proud Minnesotan, and a proud veteran. My family, friends, and I sacrificed a lot over those 26 and a half years so I could serve our country in the manner they needed me to. So I'm respectfully requesting that the veteran definition and documentation be amended to make it possible for veterans such as myself to be able to get the designation on license cards and license plates that we have earned. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Major Shorts, and for your service. Uh, any questions or comments from members? All right, uh, seeing none, uh, Representative Kosnick, any comments for the committee? I appreciate the committee's uh, consideration and the support of both the lead and the chair of the committee on this bill. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, Major Schwartz. Thank you for, again, uh, your time testifying and bringing the bill forward to my attention. And uh, I remain optimistic that this is uh, something that the state can make it a little bit easier for our veterans to obtain that designation that they've so um, honorably earned. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate all the support. All right, I renew my motion to re-refer House File 2966 to the Transportation Finance and Policy Committee. Mr. Petri, please take the roll. Representative Zhang. Aye. Representative Zhang, aye. Representative Detmer. Aye. Representative Detmer, aye. Representative Berg. Aye. Representative Berg, aye. Representative Bliss. Aye. Representative Bliss, aye. Representative Edelson. Aye. Aye. Representative Edelson, aye. Representative Frederick. Aye. Representative Frederick, aye. Representative Greenman. Aye. Representative Greenman, aye. Representative Nelson. Aye. Representative Nelson, aye. Representative Postman excused. Representative Raleigh. Raleigh, aye. Representative Raleigh, aye. Representative Sundin. Aye. Representative Sundin, aye. And Mr. Chair, we have 10 ayes and zero nays. All right, by a vote of 10 ayes and zero nays, House File 2960. Oh, Representative Nelson, did you have a comment? I just wanted to say, make sure that you you say that it's, that it's noted it's as amended. Um, when you re, re or when you renewed your motion, you didn't say that it was as amended, oh. but just so when you say it, we have it in the record. That's all, I'm, that's all. All right, thank you, Representative Nelson. Uh, I'll repeat, uh, by a vote of 10 ayes and zero nays, House File 2966 as amended is on its, uh, as amended uh, is on its way to the Transportation Finance and Policy Committee.